Why do we have GMOs? Actually, we've been modifying crops for thousands of years to prevent crop loss from pest and weather damage, to grow more food on less land, even to improve nutrition. First question is pretty simple, is just what does GMO stand for? It stands for Genetically Modified Organism. Genetically Modified Organisms, or GMOs, are any organism whose genetic material has been altered using genetic engineering techniques. They are used to produce medicines, genetically modified food, and in scientific research. What is GMOs? Genetically Modified Food produced for human consumption and derived from organisms whose genetic material DNA has been modified in a way that does not occur naturally. For example, through introducing a gene from a different organism. Many types of GMOs. Number one, gene editing. This is done by inserting, deleting, modifying, or replacing a DNA in the genome of a living organism. Number two, transgenic. Transgenic refers to an organism or a cell whose genome has been altered by the introduction of one or more foreign DNA sequences from another species by artificial means. Are the GMO crops safe? GMO food are carefully studied before they are sold to the public to ensure that they are safe as to the food we are currently eating. According to Bear Grubble, on average, each GMO product takes 16.5 years and costs $115 million for research, development, and governmental regulatory approval. The regulatory phase is the longest duration of the overall process and alone can take five to seven years. Status of Rwandan Culture According to the International Trade Organization, agriculture is a major economic sector for the people of Rwanda. It employs about 70% of the total population. The industry contributes about 31% to GDP and it stands out as one of the most strategic sectors in Rwanda's development. Positive effects of GMOs Increased food production According to OCHA, the 2023 aggregate cereal production is officially estimated at 847,000 tons, about 10% above the last five-year average. Following favorable weather conditions, especially during 2023, February to May long grain season. Number two, improved nutrition. According to UNICEF Rwanda, 800,000 Rwandan children under five are stunted. Data shows that older a child gets the more likely they are to be stunted. Just 22% of children between 8 to 6 months are stunted. But this speaks at a staggering 39% for children aged between 18 to 23 months. Negative effects of GMO crops. Number one, GMO crops might trigger allergic reactions. Number two, antibiotic resistance. It is a TV, the voice of agriculture and livestock. We ask international institutions and NGOs in agriculture to support our cause, which is to show the role of social media in educating youth and women about sustainable agriculture practices to ensure food security, nutritional health, and green environment.
We would love to do our talks about agriculture in different languages, but because we are financially disadvantaged, we only do it in Kinyarwanda instead of in Chinese, Swahili, and English. We only do it in Kinyarwanda. Everyone's support is needed so as to put our efforts together and eradicate poverty and food insecurity. You can reach us on our email mbazewili123 at gmail.com. Opportunities Rwanda could get from producing GMO crops. Number one, reducing crime rate. Number two, attracting investors. Number three, encouraging innovations for researchers and food processes. Number four, employment opportunities number five economic development opportunities Rwanda might get once it adapts GMO crops number one increase food production and security meaning high yields drought tolerance and enhanced nutrition number two economic benefits meaning Export potential, increased income for farmers, and investment and innovation. Number three, sustainability and environmental benefits, meaning reduced pesticides use, improved land use, and climate change resilience. GMO crops production can come with challenges. Number one, myths, which its solution can be educational campaigns. Number two, reduction of exports in EU countries, which could be solved by searching new markets and building strong food processing institutions. Number three, rise of organization and campaigns which are against GMOs like non-governmental organization or suppliers of agrochemicals which would be solved by government regulations number four stopping financial aids and other collaboration with the governments which are against gmo which can be solved by us being self-resilient saving and searching for new partners number five lack of knowledge and skills about GMO and researchers, which can be solved by investing in capacity building and research. Number six, personal interests and benefits, which can be solved by government interventions as a regulator. Contribution of a journalist in GMO sensitization. One, they can promote the GMO crops through educating their audience and uh, sensitizing opportunities to remove misinformation and myths as stated above. Number two, they can provide a platform for researchers to share knowledge. Number three, they can help to avoid bias. It uses a TV, the voice of agriculture and livestock. We ask international institutions and NGOs in agriculture to support our cause, which is to show the role of social media in educating youth and women about sustainable agriculture practices to ensure food security, nutritional health, and green environment. We would love to do our talks about agriculture in different languages, but because we are financially disadvantaged, we only do it in Kinyarwanda instead of in Chinese, Swahili, and English. We only do it in Kinyarwanda. Everyone's support is needed so as to put our efforts together and eradicate poverty and food insecurity. You can reach us on our email mbazewili123 at gmail.com. Thank you so much. This is Ikyuzuzo TV, the voice of agriculture and livestock. Mm -hmm.